another day another coffee and in today's video we're actually going to go ahead and create these shoes because i was going to go shopping today to buy shoes but if you don't know i'm from wales and we're about to go into another lockdown so considering i can't go to buy shoes we're going to go make some shoes so if you're interested in learning something new today start a blender follow along with me and let's jump on into the video <laughs> Okay, we're back ladies and gentlemen. We're up and live in Blender. Today's pack lunch, or today's coffee. We've got a nice coffee beverage, and we've got actually got a Kit Kat too. So if you do hear me munching during this tutorial, I apologize. But you know, I'm all for staying, you know, well nourished uh, during a video. So let's, let's get this tutorial on the go. So in order to create some shoes today, we're actually gonna use the starting cube, because I'm very kind. I do like, to let the cube become something pretty as often as I can. So to start here, I'm just gonna shrink it down using S there. I'll try I'll try to narrate as best as I can. And then I'm gonna jump into the front view here, GZ, just to bring this up in line. And then I'm gonna tab the edit mode, press three to select faces. I'm gonna select this top face and press GZ just to bring this up. And this is gonna be the part where your ankle, you know, enters the shoe. And then from here, let's add a loop cut, so control R, and then left click, right click, just to give this a nice centered cut. And as we do with anything, you know, well, my general preference is to make something really low poly first, and then we'll build on it. So from here, in edit mode, I'm going to click on this front face, do E to extrude this out. And now if you're modeling something for Minecraft, guys, you know, the, I'm, I've seen the Roblox modelers, the Minecraft modelers. Congratulations, there you go, you know, you're welcome. But if you're looking for something with a bit more geometry and you'd like to add, you know, some extra funky stuff, what we're gonna do from here is come over into our modifiers and let's add a subdivision service modifier. So now we've got a, something that look, resembles a sock, but that's a good, that's a good sign. We're on, we're on our way. Initially, I wanna create a hole. So tab back into edit mode, make sure you've pressed three to select faces, select this top face, press X, and delete faces cool and now we've got the entry point into our shoe that's gonna be cool and now i want to create the base of the shoe that's a bit more flat so uh with a tab at the edit mode do control r here in the center point i'm gonna click and just move this down depending what type of shoe you want to make you know you might be after a boot a welly trainer sneakers americans but you know you americans might call it but you know you know, use your own sort of style, add your own bit of flair to these tutorials, because after that, you can go ahead and tweet it to me, send it to me on Instagram, and I can go, whoa, dude, love your work, because I do, I love everything you guys do. So, oh god, I don't half ramble. <laughs> Once you're happy with the general placement of your lines, just hold alt, select one of these vertical lines near the base, and that's gonna go ahead and select the entire loop, then do alt E, and click this option, extrude faces along normals. Then if we drag our mouse up a little bit, this is gonna give us that bit of an indentation where you see those lines. Now this is a very defined line. Yeah, I haven't done anything different. Normally it's not so prominent, but I'm happy with that. Cool, that looks pretty decent to me. And what I'm gonna do there, I'm gonna press two to select edges, hold alt, select this layer edge up here. And then it's easy to bring this down because <clears throat> I want it a bit less boot-like and more kind of like a trainer. But we're already well on our way. I think this is looking kind of cool. And what we're going to do is, in our subdivisions, I'm going to bring these both down to one in the red and the viewport to make sure everything's nicely lined up. And we're just going to apply. So now we've got a bit more of a complex shape. This really is coming along well. From here, let's go ahead and what we can do. How am I going to do this? I think what I'll do is I'll press 2 to select edges. Hold Alt and select this middle loop. So this is going to go right around to the back there. And we're just going to do Control B to bevel. Like this. You can scroll your mouse wheel up and down to increase or decrease the amount of loops. But what we're going to do is scroll your mouse wheel all the way down first. So you've got no, just, just the one bevel. And then scroll your mouse wheel up once to get two. And what we're looking to do here is to create this little center column so we've got two columns here now which we can split off and turn into the is it the tongue of the shoe i forget what it's called but what we're going to do now is press three to go into faces i'm going to select this one hold shift and select these three then we can do p selection 
And once you've gone ahead and did that, what you'll find now is that this is a separate object that we can play around with. And this is going to be that, is it, I forget what it's called, is it the tongue of the shoe or is it something else? I don't know, let me know in the comments below because I'm, I'm not, I'm no shoe expert, I just like modeling characters from time to time, which I think is quite fun. Cool, but what we're going to do from here is with this thing selected, we're going to go to object, set origin to center of mass. That's going to move the origin right here so that when we decide to scale this up, it's going to scale nicely in the right areas. It's going to start bringing this section up because what we're going to do from here is start adding some extra geometry to this thing. So we're going to click on this center part, come into modifiers and initially we'll add a solidify modifier and then if we drag up our thickness a little bit. I'm going to hold shift here to make those more fine adjustments, something like that maybe. And then I'm also going to add, add a subdivision surface modifier. I'm going to keep everything on one for now, just to make sure everything's still relatively low poly during the modeling process. Then we could jump into front view, hit tab into edit mode, press one, to select vertices. And this is where you can start really experimenting with the different shapes. Like you come into this side and you could start really just getting those really you know funky different types of shoes and trainers and boots depending completely on what it is you're going for i'm just going to keep these relatively basic something like that and now let's do a similar thing with the overall shoe itself so i'm going to add a solidify modifier i'm going to hold shift and increase my thickness a little bit but one thing i tend to do when i'm working with these you know clothing and such is I turn on this option for only rim and make sure we have fill rim enabled because what that's going to do is it's only going to, if I enable this only rim, it's only going to fill to the rim section here and then anything inside, it, you know, it's not going to add that extra geometry inside because I imagine if you work with games and such, there's no point having these extra polygons going all the way down inside because you know you're never going to see it and it's just adding unnecessary strain on your computer which you're never going to see anyway so it's you know i think that's going to look fine and uh, but i think i'll increase that just a little bit more maybe maybe 1.35 or 0 0.135 don't know why i selected that number but i'm happy with that cool on top of that let's add a subdivision again Keep this down to one for now, and we can really see this thing start to come to life. You're really getting these nice shapes. And there's something else I want to do here now, so I'm going to tab into edit mode on my shoe once again. Press 2, hold Alt, select this entire loop here. We're going to do Shift D to duplicate, right click to leave in place, then do P selection. Then with it still selected, just do S to scale this down. Oop, I'm going to have to select it here, S to scale it down. It's going to come inside just a little bit and what we're going to do then is tab into edit mode press one to select vertex vertices press a to select them all then just press easy to extrude this up and now this is already going to have some modifiers applied because we took it from the main trainer itself and now we're getting that part you know the sort of hugs your little you know hugs around your ankle make sure make sure that your ankle's nice and comfy in your shoe and what you can do is turn off the only rim option here and maybe increase your thickness slightly so you've got a nice pudgy looking area and increase your scale till it fits nice and snug in your shoe and we can also reset the origin as well because right now it's down here so click in on our inner shoe here go to object set origin center of mass now when we scale it it all goes nicely from the center cool and now we're almost there really the only thing we have to do now essentially is to create a bit more definition in the front where that bit of rubber normally comes over where the you know the front is or or where the steel cap is on, on your boots and then add in some laces so let's move on to that now and i'm just gonna have a little sip of my coffee maybe a bite of the Kit Kat, but don't, don't tell my girlfriend because I think I think it might have been her Kit Kat in the fridge. <clears throat> but anyway, so let's move on to doing some of the, this. I think, yeah, this, let's do the toe cap sort of area. So if I tab into edit mode on this thing, see we've got all these faces here and we're just going to use what we've already got. So you can press C to use the selection tool here, which is going to allow you to select things. But what I want to do first is press three to go into face select mode, then press C 
for selection and just highlight most of the faces on the front then press enter when you're done then hold shift and just click on any additional ones you didn't quite get and i think i think i'm gonna go ahead i um, i think i'm happy with that don't know if i want this extra section here shouldn't matter too much but with that selected we're gonna press p selection and that's going to create this now as a separate piece and if i press gy to move this out you can see now we've got this interesting definition and what this is this is typically how shoes are made you've got like two pieces of fabric which are like folded up uh, around you know the rest of the shoe including this rubber part so with that done now all we need to do is do some fine adjustments so that everything lines up nicely so initially let's just increase the scale and maybe increase the scale on the z-axis a little bit come to my right side view gy just to bring this all in nicely make sure everything's lining up to as well as it can be and if you wanted to then you could really go further in and move some of these vertices around so they sort of look like they're overlapping onto the trainer a bit more i think just for the purposes of this tutorial i'm just going to scale them in slightly on the x-axis and just pull them in inside the shoe a little bit more just to sort of create the illusion that they're overlapping onto the trainer and then maybe scale it out on the y-axis a little bit you can see my origin point is set over here so i'm actually going to go ahead and click on my shape here to object set origin to the center of mass once again s and y to scale this out a little bit more and I think that will do. It's, got, it's looking a bit jagged here, but once we increase the general geometry and smooth this over, it should look a bit better. So let's do that now, even. So I'm going to increase my viewport render on these to three each uh, and the render two. Uh, three is just a number I tend to use because it makes things nice and smooth looking. And then just right click shade smooth, all of these. So now we can see generally what the finished shape is going to look like. I think that's looking pretty nice. I'm happy with that. So to add in the laces, we're initially going to move our 3D cursor to this point. So select this part of the shoe. Do Shift S, cursor to selected. This gives us a nice center point here. And to create some laces, we're quite simply going to add in a path and use that to model out some geometry. So just do Shift A, add a curve, and let's add in a path. Initially, this is huge. So scale that down until we have something a bit more relevant and then let's jump into our object data properties over here and you could turn off the path animation that's typically on by default but what we can do is initially in the geometry tab in here you can open this up and we're just going to increase the extrusion till you get a relative thickness of you know the lace you're looking to create depending on the style and i don't want this to be vertical i want this to be flat so with this selected to rx 90 degrees just to flatten this out and then we can add a bit of a bevel by coming into the bevel tab and then just increasing our depth i'm holding shift while i drag this thing just to really get those fine adjustments cool that looks pretty decent to me and if you want to you know save a bit more on processing power again initially we're going to reduce our resolution preview down to two and then also you could change the fill mode similar to what we did with the inner shoe you could change the fill mode to half maybe so because you're not really going to see this bottom part so you know that that'll just help if your computer is struggling maybe so with that we're going to go ahead and tab into edit mode and i'm going to enable this option up here which is our proportional editing tool you can also press o on your keyboard for that and then select this middle vertex and i'm just going to press gz to move this and if you scroll your mouse wheel up and down you can see the proportional editing tool having an effect and what i tend to do is to give it a decent radius around the shape to allow me to create some nice looking curved shapes just something like that looks pretty good to me and then from there i'm going to select this end vertex and do e to extrude this out once then e to extrude this again just to simulate that sort of kink you know when you're pulling the train into the shoe same over here e and e to extrude those out i'm just going to eyeball this you could mirror this too but just for you know simplicity sake i'm just quite simply going to leave it like that and then what we can do is jump into right side view g to move this into place maybe something like that the loop is probably a little bit higher right now so maybe i'm going to tab back into edit mode 
GZ just to bring this down just a little bit so it's a bit flatter something like that and we can jump into right side view now select our lace here shift D to duplicate shift D to duplicate and I'm gonna do it one more time depending on how many laces you want then I'm gonna select one press R to rotate G to move it nicely in place R to, R to rotate G to move it nicely into place and same with the other ones just so everything is nicely lined up to where you want it to be and they've got some sort of shoelace thing going on here and of course you can spend more time on this and add in those extra little features you know like those little metallic circle holes that go inside the shoe the more time you spend on your projects the more detail you can add, add and the more you know fine-tuned you can make these things so now let's go ahead and i'm gonna add in a backdrop so shift s cursor to world origin i'm gonna do shift a mesh add a plane s5 to scale this up by five times and let's jump on over into our materials preview to add some color to this design okay so what am i going to go for in terms of color today initially let's change my history right to this one i kind of like this because i get like this two-tone effect but remember you're not going to have that in your final render so you know choose wisely because this is what you wish it looked like <laughs> right so with that now let's go ahead and add some color initially let's do the backdrop i'm going to select our play in the background into our materials properties do new i'm just going to call this color bg and you can go for any color you like i'm thinking about an orangey color today I'm trying to stay away from those purples that i always seem to go for and for the backdrop i'm also going to increase my roughness to the max because i don't really want it to reflect too much oh actually maybe i do it goes a little bit of a different orange yeah that'll do okay cool and in terms of the shoe so i'm going to click on my shoe here and it's already got a base material i'm just going to call this base and you can make this any color you like i'm going to go for like a what's that is cayenne is it like a maybe like a yeah like a very you know light blue ever so slightly green sort of color cool and then for the front section here i'm gonna remove the base color do new and the front of these sort of shoes, like these converse type of shoes, tends to be a rubber material, if I'm not mistaken, which is typically white and quite rough because rubber doesn't really reflect. So I'm going to give this a roughness of 0.7. That looks pretty decent. But of course, the base here also needs to be this rubber color. So what we're going to do, initially, I'm just going to forward slash to isolate this shape, go into front view tab into edit mode press 3 to select faces alt z to go into x-ray mode i'm just going to highlight all of these this sort of bottom area maybe up to there so we've got this entire selection then click the plus arrow here click on the drop down click rubber and then click assign now if we press forward slash again to come back you can see we've got this nice sort of appearance now with the rubber and the shoe so on the inner shoes remove the base create new i'm going to call this inner shoe i clearly can't spell inner shoe maybe go for like a purpley color today that's cool roughness of around 0.6 i'm going to make this other part of the inner shoe the same color so it's come into my drop down inner shoe nicely done and then lastly the shoelaces so we might uh, we're gonna have to probably convert these into a mesh as well before we do anything else with them so i'm going to shift click on all of these right click and do convert to mesh now these are a nice solid mesh that we can play around with so then we can actually hold shift and click on all of these Control j to join those up into one nice object and let's go ahead and do plus new and just call this lace and you can make this any color you want i'm just going to make it a very ever so slight off white just so they're a bit darker and maybe bring the roughness up to around 0.7 because it tends to be like a cloth like material that doesn't really reflect all that much at all but that's looking pretty good now let's go ahead and join these up so what i'm going to do in my general process is i'm just going to apply all solidify modifiers on that i may have active and then i'm going to go ahead and select all of these shapes like that and then control j to join those up nicely so they've all one object with this subdivision service modifier active on everything 
So initially, let's quickly line up the camera. So I'm going to click on my camera icon here. I want this to be 1080 by 1080 to match up with most social media these days. So in our output properties, change the resolution to 1080 by 1080 here. And then we can just press N, go to view, lock camera to view and zoom this in nicely here till you get something you like, maybe around here. And I'm going to adjust my angle slightly, but that looks pretty good to me. Turn off, lock camera to view before you start moving your camera because you are going to move the position otherwise. But then what we can do is shift D on our shoe, X to lock this to the X axis to give us two shoes because two shoes are better than one shoe. And then I'm going to quickly make my backdrop a bit better. So I'm going to tab into edit mode, press 2 to select edges, select both these back edges, easy to extrude this up. Select these three inner bevels, uh, inner edges, control B to bevel. Scroll your mouse wheel up a whole bunch of times to increase those loop cuts. Right click shade smooth. And then we're pretty much good to render out this scene. All you need to do now is jump on over into our rendered view. And I'm going to use a HDRI initially to generate lots of real, real, you know, world lighting to make it really pretty. So if you've never used a HDRI before, very quickly, we're going to go into shading. And then what we're going to do is click this object object here to go into world. Make sure use node is enabled. We're going to do shift A, add in an environment texture, do color to color, click open. And you're going to need to download a HDR file from, you know, any source online. I'll leave a link in the description to HDRI Haven, very big and popular one. But essentially all a HDRI is is a large resolution image that Blender can use to generate lots of real world lighting. I'm going to use this around the 4K here. Click open. Then when we go back into our layout, we can see now that we are getting this nice effect in the background, which is bringing a lot of real world lighting to our shoe here. Cool. I'm actually going to go ahead and delete the starting default light because we don't need that. But what we can do from here, you can either add in some extra lights and play around with some of your own settings. What I'm going to do is I'm going to jump on over into my render properties here and some basic properties that I use. So if you're working in Eevee, you can turn on uh, ambient occlusion. That's going to let you play around with the distance to add more depth to your shadows. Bloom is going to give you a nice little natural glow from the lights. And then color management, you can turn this to high contrast is what I tend to use because it really makes those colors pop. But once you've got something you're happy with, feel free to go to render, render image. And if you have the ability to do so, I'd also recommend using cycles where you can because that gives you some really nice lighting and makes it look nice and pretty and good to go. So with that out of the way, that was a mouthful. Let's jump on into my finished render and see how this thing turned out. And there we have our finished render with some extra legs in there to fake a character. <laughs> and that's gonna just about do it for today's tutorial. If you did enjoy, a like and sub is very much appreciated. And if you enjoy the work that I do, consider joining my amazing Patreons in supporting this channel. The growth has been fantastic and you guys are amazing. But on that note, my name is Keelan. Enjoy the rest of your day and I'll catch you in the next one.